Greetings, dear, precious, magnificent, genius, spirit, soul that you are at the level of who you really are. Not fabricated, not programmed, but who you are. That's what's important. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful now. And we are the now. We are eternity. My topic is ignorance is never bliss. So people say, oh, ignorance is bliss. If I don't know it, it won't bother me. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's look at that. It has a partial truth, a little bit. And what happens is when we take partials, it's like fracking, fracking ourselves, uh, fragmenting ourselves in, in all these different aspects. But when you bring yourself all together, um, there is no fracking. There is no, um, what would you say, uh, uh, compartmentalizing, bureaucrat uh, self, you see. And because, see, the level where ignorance, uh, not ignorance is bliss. You see, ignorance is pain. Ignorance is suffering. Uh, ignorance is um, lack of power. Um, ignorance means not knowing who you are or being who you are. And one of the, the keys that we need to be aware of is that probably the greatest mistake anybody could make is not using this opportunity of where we are and what's going on and being here to find out and to know and be who we are. And what happens is different religions, different groups and, and sort, where you, you have to know the difference between truth and fiction, what's real and what's pretend. And when you've got a lot of news out in the world, you've got a lot of dialogues going along, a lot of narratives, a lot, all, you know, there's so many books and libraries and, and internet information. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, information. But so much information is only about the outer realm, dissecting it, labeling it, categorizing it. You know, all words, basically. Laws are words made by humans, you know, writing those down. And usually lawmakers don't follow the rules because they make the rules for other people to follow. And when you know who you are, it's not comfortable it's not comfortable doing the research at first because it starts blowing your belief systems, blowing your mind, so to speak. And when we um, own um, uh, certain beliefs and believe they're absolute truth, see, I don't believe anything or anyone because I don't need to believe. I can sense and I know and I perceive and I'm able, um, just as we all are, when we turn on that facility, that capability that we have to observe and to witness and to notice. And then you have people coming along and saying, well, you can't judge because judging means, you know, you have it in yourself. So if you see it in somebody else, you can't even talk about it or mention it because it's really you anyway. No, uh, that's, uh, that's a belief system, you see, that's something. But that doesn't have anything to do with me and my own observations and where I am and the power that I am the divine being that we all are, with divine beings. So there are so many roadblocks and blockages to people finding out and knowing and being who they really are, rather than a program, rather than a copy, rather than a caricature, rather, you know, being some kind of a, a character in a movie and a role you're playing. You know what I noticed years ago when I was a teenager and starting to date, you know, these guys and stuff, is that so many of them talked like they were in a movie. They would use those same words, those same scripts, basically. And after a while, they'd say the same things over and over again. And 
I thought, oh, that's that's interesting. Just like in dancing, if you watch people, they'll do the same move, the same move, the same move. It's just like the mind. It gets fixated, uh, and, and the brain fixated on certain things. And when what, what happens is it, it's not about gaining more knowledge of the outer world because that is very simple. It's a creation, okay? It's an idea. It's a concept. It's a word. And yet, not having knowledge of who we are, that never produces bliss. It may be the person it acts like, well, I'm fine. I don't need to know what's going on because if I know what's going on, I'm going to take it on. No, as an observer and a witness, you can perceive what's going on, but you do not identify with it. You do not take it on as you, you see. You do not uh, react always to what's going on in the outer world or reacting to whatever thoughts are going on in your mind and starting to uh, focus on those thoughts, um, wonder what they're thinking, what are they going to do, going to be an old dialogue, going over it and over it and over it, telling your story over repetitively of what was, but and you bring it right back into the now, trying to get some more morsels of pleasure out of what was or suffering or I'm right, they're wrong and what they did to me and, and, and what I did. And it's all, where is it? Where is it? It's in the mind. And we then make that real. So the essential thing is really that knowledge, knowingness of who you are and also having the philosophy or the, the, the knowledge of how this realm operates, how you're operating, the powers that you have. And when you delve into that, that it's not about outer space. This is, a, this is all a distraction. Well, we've got we to go find some other place to get to. And, and you know, mm -hmm. all of this. I wonder if it's all a big program. And all of that is because it operates on programs. That's basically what it does. The, the outer realm, the virtual reality, you might call it the overlay to the divine and the spiritual, is a program, many programs. And because when I'm working for you, I'm also working for me because I'm able to give. And as a nature, as, as a spiritual being, we love to give. We love to empower. We love to enrich. We love to um, acknowledge and appreciate others, um, animals and, and such. You, you, you're you living then in a different realm, in a different world, because you're in the spiritual. You're in the divine. And using our opportunity here to get as much knowledge as possible. And you have to go beyond the taboos. You have to go beyond whatever religious institution or organization, whichever philosophical one, a psychiatric one, government one, uh, education one, um, cultural one, um, family uh, uh, rules and regulations and customs, neighbors, concept. Because you see, it, it's when people are contaminated with the mind virus, they're contagious. And what I call it the mind virus because it, it distorts our perception. And when we, our perception is distorted, instead of tuning in and being who we are, we're always looking at someone or something on the outside to validate us, to make us feel good, uh, to solve our problems, uh, all of this. And the problems are, are basically math. It's really math is the problem. <laughs> and because nature doesn't have mathematics. It doesn't exist in nature. Now, somebody could make it look like it does because they're analyzing it and figuring it out. And you say, well, this, this leaf has 2% of this and 5%, so it has math. No, it doesn't calculate in that way. And we, and when we're calculating in math, then we're giving math the power, and and then math then becomes with mathematicians they love to solve problems. 
And when you're dealing in the knowing of who you are, and you are a master of manifestation, you can operate in this realm, in a sense, like in your own bubble of reality, and also influencing all those around you by your own example, and how you are, and how you carry that into your work, your life's work. And how you know you're a real divine being is that you really do care about others and you endeavor for their welfare. That means for their knowledge of who they really are. And that you're not operating, in a sense, from programs that fit in this reality. And so people are walking, basically now, around as uh, programs, as a computer with many, many programs operating. You're not a computer. And the mind, you could say, uh, is an original computer because it's a copy. And it's a, it, so because I would say what we call the mind is basically an infection itself because you don't need fracking. You don't need, this is my mind and my subconscious and my upconscious. No, all is known to you all. And as long as we keep giving that away to others in ignorance, because that's what everybody else does, and this is a way to teach you in school, and you want to line up, and you want to have a good job, and instead, and so, you know, you see people right now, you hear young people, it isn't about what they can do as their life's work, and working for the welfare of the animals, and the plants, and the humans, and the earth, but it's real, and really their own, it's all about how you make that much money or you be that big of a celebrity or you could throw the ball into the basket, the hoop and it's, or the ball in the hole, you know, it's over there. And, and it's, or you see what that all, that fame, the glamour, the, the, the money, the stuff, the things, and, and then it's all been accepted. I did. We all did. And when you, when you wake up, when you realize, when you start to notice, then it is challenging because you have to really work to stand on your own and in your own and be who you are consistently in the same way that is empowering to others. Uh, and you're not using that knowledge and to beat other people up and to tell them how stupid and dumb they are, but you know, a lot of people are stupid and dumb only because they're, they don't know who they are. And instead of it, and, and it becomes so much fixated on stuff and things and technology and all of this, that where are you, you see, where are you? And when you use this opportunity to get the knowledge, not of how much can I know about this and how many PhDs and how many of this can I get and masters and how much can I know of this and that? What are you doing? That's all temporary, temporary, temporary. And what is it? So when you know who you are and the wisdom you are, you have all knowing and that you operate successfully. That means in a, and I call it, you're able to achieve what you want. You're able to do your work. You're able to fulfill your divine destiny. And if you really look at the divine destiny is eventually every person will, every being will do this because they have to. It doesn't come with a little magic wand, you know, teaching children about so-called magic and witches and riding on broomsticks and things. This is all, uh, this, this is ignorance, you see, complete ignorance. And it's not about light or dark, you know, it's not because light and dark together create gray. And we call this then the gray matter. No, they say, well, if you don't go to the light, you'll have to go to the dark. If you go to the dark, forget light and dark. These are abstracts. These are, again, math. These are, again, images. These are, again, programs, you see. And if you're operating by a program, the program is controlling you, not knowing that you're agreeing to and accepting the program as an absolute reality and denying your own self as the absolute. You see? All right, so...
do your work, invest in your knowledge, you know, whether it's books or courses or classes or retreats or workshops or anything, immerse yourself in knowledge, but don't make it a belief system. Use that to go, to contemplate, to realize, to sharpen your awareness and your, um, uh, your knowingness and a ability to stay centered in true bliss. True bliss just means you're not thinking. It's just, it's, it's not a goal. It's just what happens. Breathe into your heart, in through your nose, and breathe out through your mouth. When you do that, you're centered, you see. You're back to who you are. So what is bliss? Bliss is already a state of being. That's all that it is. And from there, you see, then you are in your power and you are in tune and in harmony with, yeah.